have a traveling wave speed that is uh, positive. Okay. All right. Now, that's something to work out on your own, right? Well, let's talk about one more thing before we conclude. This will be just a pretty short lecture. I want to recall back to our Burgers equation, right? And remember the limit as psi, uh, as epsilon goes to zero from above, is going to generate shock type solutions as studied before. Okay. And the cool thing is there's two ways of getting these shock solutions. One way is to do it distributionally. So you, you know, you handle your PDE in the sense of distributions. <coughs> You can use ranking Huguenot you know, conditions, et cetera. Um, but you could also solve for the, um, the viscosity solution and then take the limit as epsilon goes to zero. So you'll, you, that's something you can check when you do your homework. Okay. Now the distributional solutions they're going to use a similar idea. So if we drop our viscosity, remember we have our inviscid Burgers equation. Looks like this, okay. Well, straight away, let's just try for a traveling wave solution, okay. So u of xt is equal to v of psi, right, where psi is equal to x minus st okay if i go ahead and do that then u sub t plus u ux is going to be equal to minus s v prime plus as we showed before v squared over two prime okay equal to zero all right so if we integrate We end up with minus s v plus v squared over two is equal to some constant. Okay. And um, if we now take psi um, going to plus or minus infinity then v in this case is going to be v plus or minus, right, these constant values. And um, overall, um, the only way to satisfy this equation, as we can see, is let's say we have minus s v plus minus plus v plus minus squared over 2 equals c. All right, so again, this implies that um, minus s v plus plus v plus squared over two is equal to minus s v minus plus v minus squared over two. We can solve for s again, right? Sort of equating c to itself. So if we solve this, right, we get um, s v plus minus v minus is equal to v plus squared minus v minus squared over two. Or in other words, s is equal to, if we simplify things, the average of v plus and v minus, okay? So we have our s there, right? But what should the um, shape be of our um, of our solution in this case. Well, um, because we just have a constant now in this case, we can see that V is not going to change in time. Okay. So V essentially is going to be piecewise constant because it's not it's not specified by a differential equation, it's just specified by an algebraic equation, 
which can only have constant solutions, right? But remember, um, you can have distributional solutions to this, and that's essentially where we're going to have our shock, right? And so if you know we're calling one of these v minus, right? That's the limit at negative infinity. The other of these is v plus, and we just have that u of x t is equal to v minus for xi less than zero and v plus for xi greater than zero. Okay. And when you work out your solution in the homework, essentially you should see that um, this should be the limit of u, u of xt Um, essentially our viscosity solution as epsilon goes to zero from above, okay? So that's a good sanity check of that case. All right, so I think that's as far as I wanna go. Um, as I said in the uh, traveling waves work that we're gonna do, we're kinda gonna just treat um, one or two different PDEs uh, with each lecture and, um, and go through uh, some of the different methods that uh, you can use in these cases, phase plane methods, uh, methods for nonlinear differential equations. The important thing is that, you know, there's no method that's gonna work perfectly for every nonlinear PDE. Uh, so we need sort of a suite of different methods. And the best way to do that is just to look at a bunch of different examples. So on Monday, we'll talk about uh, the Cordewig de Vries equation. Um, that may be the, the main one that we get through. Um, and then if we have time, we may start on what's called Fisher's equation. Um, and then the last uh, one that we'll go through is what's called the bistable equation. So if we have any additional time, I, I can prepare um, a couple more examples. Um, but uh, hopefully this gives you a flavor of uh, something different that happens once we go to nonlinear PDs. All right, thanks and see you on uh, Friday or, or Monday.